Welcome to After Hours, conversations for music educators, presented by AMRO Music. This is where we share ideas and work towards solutions to better serve your students. This week, Nick Averwater talks with Lisa Steele McDonald, Director of Vertical Marketing at Yamaha, and Tyler Swick, a music teacher from Las Vegas who has been an online music education innovator for many years. They'll be discussing the collaboration between Yamaha and Disney Pixar to create music education materials around the new film Soul. This conversation was recorded January 5th, 2021. Hey, good evening, everyone, and welcome to After Hours Conversations for Music Educators. I could not be more excited about tonight's conversation. We've got some really exciting things lined up uh, with some really exciting people, some people who are doing some really unique things. And we're going to dive into that in a minute as we start talking about Disney Pixar's newest movie, Soul. But before we do that, I've just got some announcements and some housekeeping items that I want to walk through with everybody First, if it's your first time joining us tonight, welcome. If you have any questions or you'd like to interact tonight with myself or our speakers, please use the question and answer box. This is what we're going to be watching tonight during the webinar, and you can access that by clicking on the Q&A box there at the bottom. Now, as a reminder, we've got some great conversations lined up this spring, and our next conversation after tonight is going to be on January 19th. We're excited to, uh, to welcome Dr. Tim, and we're going to talk about how to make 2021 your best year yet. Now, we know 2020 was for the birds. We're in 2021 now, and he's going to share with us some of his just passionate, fun energy on how to get mentally prepared for 2021 and what lies ahead. Now, if you're looking for a recording of this conversation or any of our previous conversations, they can be found online at www.amromusic.com backslash after hours. And the podcast of this episode and all of our previous episodes launch the Friday after each recording. So you can get the recording of this one wherever you get your podcast. And then lastly, Amro Music, the company I work with, has graciously agreed to continue supporting the After Hours podcast by covering our Zoom webinar expenses and the production expenses associated with the podcast. So if you're enjoying the webinar, if you enjoy the podcast, these conversations, and you'd like to support After Hours, you can do so by purchasing your classroom supplies, books, and accessories from Amro Music, and you can do that by contacting our director services team. Seth and Alan, I'm looking out here, they're hard at work right now getting the orders out, and you can contact them, Seth at Amro Music and Alan at amromusic.com. Great gentlemen out here, but that's enough from me. Let's meet our guests for this evening. Tyler and Lisa, welcome. How are you? Spectacular. Awesome. Thanks for having us, Nick. It's good to see you both. And of course, Tyler, I've been kind of a distant fan of yours. Let's let's start with you for a minute. Uh, I have seen your YouTube videos for a long time, and you and I recently connected on another project we're going to talk about, um, but you're kind of a, a YouTube big deal among the <laughs> education realm. So tell me about how that came to be. Uh, it, it started with a demand uh, on my end. I was about to have my first child, and I knew I had to be out of the music room, so I started putting my lessons on YouTube so that a substitute could come into the room and not have any, where's the DVD player? Where's the, you know, where's the multimedia set? They could just go on YouTube and press play on my lesson. And uh, that first sub lesson I made got a couple thousand views. And I thought, oh, maybe other people need this material. So I made a, a habit out of when I'm done with the normal school day, I go home and start creating videos to show the next school day. And I just put them all online for everyone to use. I love it now. And some of your videos have gotten considerable, I mean, tens of thousands of views. And I know some have passed my Facebook feed before, maybe some of your, your educational videos, but also some of your parody videos that you put out. Yeah, I, I have a, I mean, it's weird for me to say I have a good sense of humor, but like, I cannot be Mr. Teacher. I, I can't be Mr. Swick the whole time. Like, I do have this little bit of me that still wants to make you laugh and go back to my Weird Al influences of if I can make a parody of a holiday song and make you laugh, I'm still going to do that. Love it, man. Well, welcome. Welcome. We're excited to have you on After Hours. And Lisa, welcome as well. Now, I, I know um, you, you because I get a report of the people that attend the live webinars, and you've been watching some of our After Hours since the very beginning. So I'm really excited to have you on here now as a guest sharing with us some of the things you're working on. Yeah, I, I love I love what you're doing with After Hours. I, I think I haven't missed a single one. And uh, I'm, a, I'm I don't know, I'm a little starstruck to actually get to be a guest on it. So thanks for the opportunity. 
Well, we're excited to have you here. Now, you head up all of the marketing ev uh, efforts with Yamaha as it relates to their band and orchestra divisions. Is that correct? Uh, technically, my title is Director of Vertical Marketing, which means that I focus on customers that are really important to our industry, specifically music educators and houses of worship. So um, anything that relates to educators, my team is focused on trying to make sure that we're getting it out there and sharing it with people when they need it. That's awesome. Well, uh, and we've got some really cool projects that we're going to talk about, but let's lead in and first start with the movie Soul. Of course, it just dropped on uh, December 25th. I have a four-year-old and I think I've watched it like seven times now. So Lisa, for those that have not watched the movie, can you just give us a little overview um, so they're aware of what we're talking about? Yeah, absolutely. So um, Soul is the latest Disney Pixar film. And for those of you who saw Inside Out, it's very kind of of the same feeling. Um, it's a cartoon about metaphysics of all things, so they're, they're tackling the big issues. But the, the hero of the movie is a man named Joe Gardner. And Joe is a middle school band director who is worried, he's uh, a little worried that he has missed his life's purpose. He thinks that he was meant to be a professional jazz musician. And in the course of the movie, he gets the call, he gets the audition, he gets the gig, and then he is so excited that he falls through a manhole cover and knocks his soul right out of his body and has to get back to his body to take up the, the life that he thinks he wants. And the point of the movie is, is that uh, as he's in the great before where souls get their, their personalities is that he has to figure out what it means to find your spark, uh, not only for him, but for the people around him. Perfect. Well, and, and we're going to come back to that term, find your spark, because that's kind of a theme throughout the movie and, and some of the marketing materials that we're going to discuss in the initiatives. Talk about the spark. So what does it mean when you say find your spark from the movie's perspective? From the movie's perspective, it's, it's there, are, there are things that make up who you are, your personality traits and, you know, why one of us is an introvert and one of us is an extrovert. But there's also that thing that is your passion, that thing that makes life worth living. And it, it could be different for all of us. It is different for all of us. But the point of the great before in the movie is giving all these souls the opportunity to find that thing. And when you find it, your, your, your past, for lack of a better way to put it, is, is complete and you're ready to go. You're ready to start the next phase. So um, Joe has to, to, he thinks he knows what his spark is. He has to find out what his spark is, but he also takes on the role of mentoring other people to find their spark, which I think is probably an activity and a theme that everyone on this call can resonate with and relate to. Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, when, there's no doubt when you internally have your spark, you're eager to share that excitement with others. And, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. Okay. So Tyler, Let's talk about the movie from the educator's perspective, because I have seen a little bit of two camps forming as it relates to this movie. And so I, I don't want to have this conversation and maybe not acknowledge um, what's going on from the educator's perspective. And I understand maybe you have been a member of both camps. Yeah, no, I definitely started in the what just happened camp. <laughs> and what do you what do you mean the what just happened camp? Tell me so, why you felt that way. So you're an educator and you watch this preview and you go, wow, here comes a movie about being a middle school band director. Yes, finally, here's my movie. Uh, and then about 11 minutes into the movie, you go, where'd that, where'd that band room go? <laughs> and, uh, and the movie ends and you go, oh, the band room never came back. Where'd the band, what happened to the band room? Uh, and so, I definitely went into it with a lot of preconceived notions that this was our movie. This was the music educator movie. And I think a big part of uh, learning uh, to, to accept both camps is that that was a preconceived notion. Even though we see the band room, I, I automatically grabbed it and went, yes, finally ours. And it's not ours. It's, uh, it's truly a movie for all. And, and so it, letting go is a big part of that, letting go of the movie, but let it be itself. But I, I definitely started off thinking, how did it not end with him saying, I played the, 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 I played the half note, it was awesome. And then, oh, but I love music so much, I wanna teach it. Yeah. <laughs> if yeah. I just had that sentence, I'd been thrilled, but that's what I was missing. Yeah, I, I know there were some people who maybe felt like, 
uh, obviously Joe Gardner's first choice in life was not to be an educator. And there were some people that felt like, well, here's a movie kind of portraying an educator where education is his backup plan. And there were some people that were uh, understandably uh, a little upset. Of. But there's also that other side of it in that it recognizes the importance of music and the spark that it has in, in people's lives. In fact, we, we get to know a, a girl, a trombone player in the band, and we see her spark just starting to take shape and the impact it has on her life. And so we do get a little glimpse of that in music. But you've come full circle, Tyler. You, you started out maybe a little cool to the idea but have since embraced it and warmed up and seen some other elements come through. Right. I, I did my best to watch other people's opinions. And I saw videos about here's a band director <laughs> reacting and they had the same ideas I had. And then finally, there's another one that was about a, a screenwriter and his reaction. And he pointed out that all the Pixar movies, as well as most movies, uh, the main character gets what they want at the end. Right. We're looking for something and we find it with seven minutes left in the movie and we all exhale and credits roll. And this is a movie where Joe Gardner gets what he wants in the first act. He wants to be in the band. He got in the jazz band at the half note. And then what? Then we took it away. And I think all of us saw that was like, that's what's supposed to happen at the end of the movie. So losing that, I think was a big part of it. It's almost become a, a downer of he got what he wanted and then it was taken back. And I found that to be difficult to, to comprehend because I think maybe we've all been there where we had a secondary goal early in life or even now and to have it and lose it seems far worse uh, than to never having had it once at all. So I've circled back to the camp of, you know, this movie's for everybody. It does create some hope um, in my head, I thought, you know, I'd love to see Connie again at the end. Connie at the beginning, she's amazing. Connie in the middle, she doesn't know she kind of wants to quit. Act three, where's Connie? I don't know. So I told my dad, who's also a music educator, I said, you need to watch this and, you know, tell me what you think, because this can't just be me. And he watches it and he just goes, oh, yeah, that's you. I go, what are you talking about? He goes, that's the main character. You didn't want to go to college to be a music teacher. I was like, no. And he goes, well, neither does that guy. And I thought, well, it wasn't offensive all of a sudden. I go, oh, yeah, well, I mean, I struggled with it, but now I don't struggle with it. And he's like, yeah, but the movie has to end at some point. You know, the movie could follow him another 10 years, and all of a sudden he loves teaching, or he's the best teacher, or, you know. And so it really kind of resonated with me with my own struggles of a time where I didn't want to be in the classroom. Now, of course, now I'm in love with it. But back then, when I was deciding college to be, you know, a percussion performance major or an education major, there was a real family household struggle to make me sign the papers for the education degree. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I think, you know, the, the reason I wanted to open with this, because we very well could have some people that are listening, you know, to, to this podcast and they're thinking, hey, I was kind of in the camp that didn't love the way educators were portrayed. And to your point, Tyler, there's maybe more to the story. But what I don't want us to do as we get ready to talk about these marketing materials is to lose sight with the positive manner in which it, it portrays music. I mean, it, it music is the primary spark in the video, and we very clearly see the impactful role it has on on the, all of the characters that are that have music as their spark. And so I think there's going to be some cool opportunities to kind of take that and apply it to our classrooms. And, and so Lisa, I want to, I want to start with you. Uh, and as we talk about how to take this movie and apply it to the classroom, because Yamaha and Disney have actually created this collaboration uh, directly together. And you all have worked with Disney to put together some recruiting materials. So tell me a little bit about the materials y'all put together. Yeah, absolutely. And actually, I am going to take over and share my screen for just a minute um, as I talk through some of that. And I'll try and be very descriptive for the, the viewers on the podcast of the podcast. Um, so we wanted to take the movie and use it as an opportunity to talk about uh, to talk to the non musical parent. I think when you t think about people who had a really great experience in in the classroom, and it was very formative to them. They're, we're preaching to the choir there. Their kids are probably going to be encouraged to be in music. But there's a lot of parents, um, and I was one when my kids were young, who, who don't really appreciate everything that music does for a student. 
So we wanted to focus on the idea that music will help your kids find their spark. And in doing that, we have, we have a campaign that is um, going live where basically there's a message to parents and I'll play one of the versions of it for you in just a minute. Um, where there's a message that if you want to give your kid a great start, if you want to help them find what they're passionate about, you should choose music. And, and that's the recurring theme, choose music. We've built a great landing page that I'm going to show you in just a second that talks to parents about the social, emotional, physical, developmental benefits of participating in music making and enjoying music, and then really makes it very approachable for them to get their kids involved with music. Sometimes I think for parents, especially if they're not musicians, it's a little, um, it can be a little intimidating trying to figure out where to start. So we try to really make it very um, approachable and easy for them and very inclusive of the experience that they're having. So part of it is digital right now. Obviously we have a lot of, a lot of people that are only communicating with parents uh, digitally, but also we're working with all of our music dealers across the country to make sure that there's support in the classrooms. Uh, we have posters for all the teachers to use in their classrooms. Music starts here to encourage the kids that come in. Obviously, there's a legal line that we have to be careful about marketing to children in order to make it palatable to our schools and our school districts. So we've been very careful about that. Those are our printed posters that you can give to all of your teachers. We've allocated multiple posters per teacher per classroom. The AMRO ed reps will have that. So um, all of your teachers will, will be able to access that from their ed reps. We also have things that'll be in store to bring soul into your store, whether that's posters or uh, window displays, standees in the store, uh, counter cards, exposing parents to a bunch of different ideas about how they can involve their children in music. And then we'll have a landing page um, that they can go to as well. And the idea there is to really walk the parent through it, let them choose music to help their kids see what they were meant to do. And the thing that I really like about it is it's developmentally appropriate. So it's been split into sections by age. We've had some, some early childhood music education experts help us break that into four to five, six to eight, nine to 14. And then I'm really proud of the fact that we work very closely with uh, United Sound and some of their constituencies to make sure that we included adaptations and accommodations for children who have exceptional needs. What we know from experience is that a lot of times if a parent does have a child with exceptional needs, they feel like there is no place in music for their child. They're very intimidated by the prospect. And we wanna make sure that they know that that's not true and that there is a place in the music classroom for their child as well. We give them a little hint, uh, a bite-sized piece of that um, by age range, along with adaptations for children with special needs. And then we um, drive them into a 30-day reminder program to get them doing music with their kids, experiencing music with their kids, loving music with their kids, and going out to the community and looking for resources in their community to expose their children to music as well. And so that obviously has a ton to do with our dealers and our educators and making sure that they are um, being exposed to all the people in their community who would happily help them involve their child with music. There's um, our own website, it's gonna be a takeover. So we're, we're doing that as well. We are putting a ton of money into advertising this to parents and driving parents into this campaign to get them used to it. And then we have some great emails that go out over the course of 30 days. But the important thing and the thing I wanna share with you is that we are making it all available digitally as well um, in appropriate sizes for email and social and websites. And that will all be available through your AMRO educational reps for all the teachers in their territories. Sorry, that was a lot fast. <laughs> this is, that was so wildly impressive. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is really good stuff. So. So obviously, a lot of recruiting takes place in March, April, and May, and mm -hmm. but but I see a ton of opportunities here for directors maybe to start implementing some of this, and at least if nothing else, start dripping some of this content, these ideas about the role of music, while kind of the movie's the hot thing right now. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I, sorry, Nick, if I can go backwards for one second, I realized I forgot to show you the video. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. Please share that. Really quickly, let me just show you that video. Um... Music is life. Spend your precious hours doing what will bring out the real you. Get ready. Your life is about to start. Creativity soars when you start life with music. Give your child the power to play their whole life. Choose music. Music is... And so that will also be part of the digital package for our dealers and our educators. Absolutely love that. So, I mean, that, that was a video that was applicable to um, all, all ages, you know, all, all levels, middle school, high school, elementary level, band, orchestra, choir. I mean, every, everything, it just talks about the benefits of music. So for people that might be looking for maybe some lead in recruiting materials, it's not quite time yet, but I want to start building some excitement. I mean, Yamaha's put together some really turnkey stuff. And so if you're interested in utilizing all of this, of course, we're going to congregate all of this, uh, that Lisa, this awesome stuff that Yamaha's put together. We're going to make it available on amromusic.com backslash after hours. So we're going to make it as accessible as we can. And then Lisa, I assume somewhere that this, some of this is going to be accessible to for uh, download on Yamaha's blog or where, where can people go to find more information on your end? Yeah, so we'll absolutely have it on um, a shared server, and we will basically give out credentials for that for all of our school music dealers, and they can give them to all of their teachers. If for some reason I saw in the chat there's a teacher from Pennsylvania who maybe doesn't have a Yamaha dealer in their area, um, contact me. My contact information will be available um, after the webinar, and we'll definitely make sure that you have access to it. Yeah, yeah. And to clarify, this is certainly not something that a marketing campaign specific to AMRO. We just happen to be the local Yamaha dealer in our market, but any Yamaha dealer will have access to these materials. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, any school music dealer. Uh, they, any. Yeah, yeah. We really are. We want to make this the rising tide that, that, you know, lifts all ships. So we want every school music dealer in the country to have access to this, every teacher to have access to it. Well, this, this is such, in my opinion, such a cool initiative and, and probably cannot be understated the, the monumental task because I know working with a company like Disney, obviously they're tremendous, tremendously successful, but I suspect they're also systematized and they have their expectations and are very particular about their brand. And for Yamaha to come along and say, hey, kind of share some of that Disney magic with us and let's make music happen. I suspect some people have worked really hard on this. Yeah, I, I don't think it's an over exaggeration to say that the legal clearances with Disney took longer than creating the actual campaign did. Um, they they they're very thorough. Let's just yeah. say that. Well, really appreciate your team and all of their efforts to make this happen. And, and of course, um, anybody that's interested, uh, as soon as Yamaha posts all this, we'll make it available and begin distributing. So this is great. So, OK, so Lisa, this is some of the stuff. Tyler, what do you see when you see this material and how can somebody actually take this and apply it to their classroom? I mean, I get giddy, honestly. Like I was smiling the whole time. Every every clip, every footage, every little icon. Uh, there's a ton of just visual uh, recognition. They see a character, they see it on TV. And, and you pointed out that your daughter had you watch it a, a couple of times and my daughter's had me watch it a couple of times now. Uh, it's almost a daily occurrence now, but you see a character from the show and you go, you know, it just, it just you recognize the character and you think about the joy it brought or the, all the emotions. Uh, and so today and yesterday in class, I've been using soul to teach rhythms and the look on students' faces, I teach K-5 elementary music, but even for a fifth grader, they've been watching this movie. It's kind of a them thing. They don't go, they're not in the theaters, right? Because we're watching movies at home that movie experiences of them and the TV. So all of a sudden their music teacher is sharing this experience of, oh, did you see that movie? And because of that joint conversation, their faces were just exploding with excitement that, whoa, Joe Gardner's talking about how to play ta, t t ta on my computer screen all of a sudden. Um, and so I just think it's incredible to be able to relate those two and, and really combine the emotions of, did you like the movie? Well, you could be Connie. You could easily be the kid with Skittles up the trumpet, but hopefully you're Connie. Uh, 
Absolutely. And there, I think there were a couple of things that a lot of music educators could really relate to. The first was the opening song um, played by the middle school band. I, I about fell out of my chair in that. And then there was another scene where a young man was laying on his chair asleep and the band was playing. And he said, Hey man, where's your saxophone? He said, I left it at home and he rolled back over. And I thought, yeah, I think there's some educators that could totally, totally For sure. to that. But, but can you share with the, I mean, so you've taken soul and you're not using it from a, a, a recruiting perspective. You're taking it and applying it at a curriculum perspective. Can you, do you mind giving us a glimpse of what some of that looks like? Oh, actually, I thought, you know, we're doing rhythms, of course, reading rhythms. My middle school band director would love me if they could show up reading rhythms. Uh, so I want to make sure that they can read simple quarter note, eighth note patterns. And so I was just combining uh, character names with the rhythms that they are. And did you want me to show that video or did you want me, I can just yeah, talk about it? Just, just a little, a little bit of both. Maybe just we'll do 60 seconds and we can chat about it. One, two, one, two, three, four, two, twenty two, twenty two, twenty two. And for those at home, I'm showing the pattern that we're hearing on the screen. Is this showing it's paused? Yeah, you're good. Oh, okay, fantastic. Garner Joe, Garner Joe, Garner Joe. And just that simple stuff of we're combining the character's face with the rhythm that we're hearing. They have to understand quarter notes, eighth notes, and rest to get the kind of the joke of what we're doing. And there's just some recognition of, I know who that person is. And it was really a, a, a them thing. And I'm trying to make it an us thing. Everyone in the room knows Joe Gardner at this point. And so before the lesson would start on, I could take a poll and just say, who's seen the movie? And right now I'm rocking about like a 75, 80% of my students have seen the movie already. Uh, and so for those who haven't, sometimes I show the preview. If it's a lot of kids that haven't, I show the preview <laughs> and then we jump into it and they go, oh, that's the character from the preview. So just kind of utilizing the recognition of it's a fun movie we all enjoyed. And now I'm the music teacher. I tell them I'm, I'm Joe Gardner basically. And they have a hard time with that one, but I, I, it means more to me than it does to them. <laughs> well, uh, you might not be able to sit down and play the piano like Joe does, but I do see that steel drum that I suspect you can wow them with. Oh, uh, yeah, in, definitely. In the back. So <laughs> if anybody is looking for some of the ways that you're using this, Tyler, I know you're very generous and you share a lot of your digital content on your YouTube channel. So is some of this is going to be making its way over there for anybody that's looking for it. Yeah, it's already there. I, I put things up as soon as I finish it, I put it up because in my mind, if I need it now, somebody else needs it now. Uh, my favorite thing to do, I put them in the Facebook groups, those communities of elementary online music teachers. And, you know, it's just, there's a real reward of when people jump in saying, hey, thank you, I needed something. You know, if it's Sunday night and they go, I needed something for tomorrow. And there's a real joy of like, teachers, we got each other, you know? Yeah. Well, I absolutely love this. I mean, I think we have two perfectly great examples of, you know, ways that we can use this both in our classroom and then to, to grow interest in our program and to kind of use this finding your spark message to, to garner some interest in this. So uh, Tyler, I mean, awesome stuff. Lisa, really cool. So thank you for your efforts, everything that you've done to brought us to this point. So now I want to turn our attention a, a little bit and, and look ahead. Um, and, and maybe we're going to talk about soul. We're not going to talk about soul, but I think there's some cool projects that are also going on that I, I want to take some time on. So first, Lisa, do you mind just sharing with us some of the other initiatives outside of soul that Yamaha's got going on that might be of interest to educators? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm going to jump on and share my screen for, for one more minute. Um, so first of all, I just want to share with everyone, uh, the Yamaha educator suite, Everything we do, we um, we put up there. So if you're ever looking for something, it's a great it's a great landing place. It's a great place to start. Um, we also have um, not only an impressive artist roster of about six or seven hundred band and orchestra artists, but we have a great generation of Yamaha master educators. I know it's hard to think about. Uh, your own self-development right now when we're all a little bit down in, in the foxhole trying to take care of our kids. But uh, we wanna make sure everyone knows that that resource is available for in-service or for bringing in master classes um, and, and helping inspire your, yourself and your colleagues. 
we have some great colleagues in the audio division who are doing a series of learning events called Audioversity. And I'm gonna put links for all of this into the chat and uh, on the page for this podcast as well. But one of our, our friends over in Europe did a great webinar that's very accessible, very easy to digest about how to make your sound better um, for online teaching. And it's everything from completely free solutions to very inexpensive solutions to inexpensive solutions. Um, there's nothing kind of unaccessible in that. We are rounding up everything we find uh, in this resources for online teaching article. It's always on our homepage. So if you're looking for lessons plans or links to uh, what different people are doing, there's certainly a ton of um, items in here from some of our favorite retailers. And it's always there, it's always updated. We update it at least once a week, sometimes more often than that. We took a little break during the holidays um, as well. And all of this too, by the way, I just wanna say, if you subscribe to our newsletter and I'll put the link in the chat, um, we'll send it to you. So you don't have to proactively come and look for it. And then a couple other things I just wanted to make people aware of that are available through our partners is, um, Music for All is doing a series of live streams called Mind the Gap. And they're for young music teachers, student music teachers who maybe are feeling like they're not having the in-classroom experience they hoped they were gonna have in the early part of their career. And it's really leaning on experienced teachers to fill in, in the gap there. There's also a great series they're doing on social and emotional learning and how to um, position that in terms of your music program specifically to your educators, your parents, and your school board. And then last but not least, for teachers who are looking for some things that are pre-canned that they can use with their kids, um, Music Professor has partnered with Music for All to make that very accessible and um, cost-friendly for music programs for the, the educators as well. And then of course, you should absolutely subscribe to Teller's YouTube channel because it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, so a lot of great resources there. I have to admit, I'm I'm on the email subscriber list for um, Yamaha's uh, educator um, blasts, and they're they're really well done. So kudos to your team, and uh, I mean y'all have an incredible roster of master educators too. People who have, I can only ima imagine the combined years of experience uh, that are being shared through that content, and so a great way just to to get a steady flow of really high quality information from people who really are at the top of their game and know what they're talking about. So great stuff. So for anybody that's interested, we're going to reference all of that. We're going to link all of that again at amromusic.com backslash after hours. You can find all of these resources um, and, and we'll congregate everything there. Okay. So shifting gears a little bit, Lisa, let's, let's look ahead. And, and Tyler, there's some challenges on the horizon. And of course, the three of us have been working on a, a project that we want to take just a few minutes to share with everyone because we think it could be of interest. So Lisa, do you just mind kind of priming the pump about maybe what problems we potentially see on the horizon and some of the players who are getting involved to provide some resources to help educators overcome those challenges? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think it's not an understatement to say that um, this recruiting season will be a recruiting season like no other, and that fall 2021 will certainly be the start of a, of a year that is, is like no other. Um, we have some programs that had to go into shutdown and really have had an entire gap in terms of beginning band students. We have some programs that were lucky enough to kind of make it through, but even those programs that did the kids are not in the same place they would be if it had been a traditional year, if they had had a full year of in-classroom. So you either have two years of beginners or you have a year of beginners and a year of half beginners. And I think there's a lot of pacing challenges. One of the other things we're hearing too is when this started, everyone was all hands in just trying to keep the school year going, but that getting administrators to really understand that music is possible and viable and can be done in, in a safe and effective way was a harder discussion in 2020. And we wanna get in front of it and make sure that it's not, that it's an easier discussion in 2021, not even harder than it was this past year. Yeah, absolutely. So, so the, a, a team has been assembled that is working on essentially just content ideas. And, and the team has been meeting and, and they're recognizing that there's some challenges, everything from how to have a conversation with your administrator about 
is music safe and is it important to our school and what scheduling changes need to take place so that we can have those students that we're hoping to have next year with the double classes and what the larger class is going to mean from the curriculum level and, and how we can look ahead and see all of these predictable challenges. And so I know Yamaha has agreed to help us put together and, and, and host some of this content and some of the content is forthcoming. I know we've got Marsha Neal joining us as a participant, uh, uh, an attendee tonight, and she's been behind the scenes, a big help and, and Barry Trowball, an all-star educator. And w- there's a lot of organizations that are really wanting to put some content to, together, not just to face today's challenges, but face uh, the, the foreseeable tomorrow's challenges. And I think that's what this is really all about. So Lisa, what are some of the, I mean, where can people go to when the content is posted and we're probably a few weeks out, where can people go and find some of this information? Yeah. So we're going to um, build a landing page on the Yamaha educator suite, which is the blog we just shared. It'll be dedicated to this project that we are all working on together. Uh, it'll tie to a Google drive to make it really accessible and I think, you know, one of the things that we've found is that um, there, there's, there's, teachers like edu- there's teachers like Barry and Tyler who are doing really great in some particular aspect of this, and they're happy to share, and they want other people to learn from their successes. So we're really trying to put together this great repository of save as moments. You know, here's what, what Barry did with his parents that was really successful, adapt it for your program. And um, I think, you know, one of the great things about it, uh, Nick, is that there's, there's kind of a time cadence to it. So there'll be reminders and, it, and it'll be there, but it'll also be laid out for you. So, you know, now's the time to go and talk to your administrators. Now's the time to collaborate with the, you know, your English teacher. Now's the time to talk to your counselor about scheduling. And here's a bunch of examples of how people have done it successfully. Absolutely. Which is what brings us a little bit to our call of action, because, you know, in the spring, of course, we worked on this doc considerations for a safe return. And if you've been following the podcast from the spring, you kind of watch the evolution of that document come to be over a period of of five or six weeks with a a team of really awesome educators that were working hard on that. And really, we want to take a very similar approach where this is almost open source, where we make these documents and these resources available. And so I I kind of bring this to say there is an invitation. And if you are an educator that's joining us today and you have some really great resources that email templates where you had great conversations with your administrator and with your your counselor, your principal, things like that, that you would like to make available, we would invite you to send that to us so that we can include this in this repository of information to help educators overcome these problems as well. So if you've had a great email exchange with your superintendent about the importance of music and want to share with us that email you use to kick off the conversation, please do. We would love to see that and make that available. You know, if you've had some great marketing materials or some great recruiting things, um, please feel free to share that with us too. And of course, we're going to use after hours and Yamaha and, and any distribution method we can use to kind of make this as available. So throughout the semester, you're going to see these conversations lining up where we talk about recruiting on after hours. We talk about relationships with your administrators on after hours so we can go into a deep dive on this content and really pull them apart and equip uh equip you to overcome these challenges. So we're really excited to launch that project and um, just give you a little sneak peek of some of the stuff going on behind the scenes. So, and Tyler's been a a huge help, uh, you know, Tyler, I just want to extend my uh, sincere appreciation too, for you joining us on this project, because you brought a great perspective from the the elementary educator perspective and what we can do to to bridge that gap between elementary and middle, because this year that could be more important than ever. Absolutely. Sending fifth graders off with the idea that they're supposed to join a music class you know that that's a real you got to set the tone now that fifth graders in three months you're filling out paperwork saying you're joining band orchestra choir something and if you pick round robin i will find you <laughs> <laughs> absolutely so we're going to be diving in how to have those conversations with your elementary school uh, music educators to ease that transition so all of these things are little speed bumps that we're hoping to pull together into a a timely resource to help educators overcome this challenge. So all of that said, more to follow. We're very excited to be launching this project. But for tonight, Tyler and Lisa, I mean, what great ideas, what great content. Thank you. As we kind of wrap up tonight's conversation and have gone through these these really good resources, is there any piece of closing information, advice, or other resources uh, you would like to share with our listeners tonight? So Tyler, I'll kick it off with you, man. It's okay to be tired. You should be tired right now. And that's okay. 
And it, it's the work we're going to put in now is what's going to save us next year. It's, we're only going to be more tired next year. If, if in, I just don't predict things will return to normal, but uh, we're going to find the energy this semester to save all of next year. And I know that sounds kind of doom and gloom, but there really is a call to action of like, we have to save ourselves now because the, yeah. the clock is unfortunately ticking already. Yeah, absolutely. Decisions are being made. Uh, and so it's time for us to find our seat at the table. Absolutely. Okay. Thanks, Tyler. And, and thank you for everything you've done. Lisa, any closing thoughts or comments you'd like to share with our listeners? Yeah, I think I, I want to offer the maybe the corollary to Tyler's advice, which is that I think that we all sometimes think that we have to be heroes and we have to soldier through and get it done and bear the burden ourselves. And if ever there was a time where you need to give yourself a little grace, and ask for help, uh, this is the time. Don't be afraid to ask your parents for help. Don't be afraid to ask other teachers for help. Don't be afraid to ask alumni for help. Um, the beautiful thing about music programs is people have an emotional connection to what happened in the room and they don't wanna see it go away. They want other people to have that option. So uh, be shameless, use your, use your network and ask for help wherever possible because you will find a lot of hands that are willing to help make the, the burden a little lighter. Absolutely. Beautifully said. Very, that very is absolutely nice. true, Lisa. Thank you so much. And Lisa, and then here's the other big question that I don't think we talked about. Uh, what, is the, what is the win for this um, content as it relates to Seoul? Uh, is there a launch date or is this readily available now? Oh, I, <laughs> I thought you said when, not when. And I was like, the win is that the parents are into it. Uh, the when is actually any day now. We got the last of the approvals from Disney um, about an hour before I got on this call with you. We're very excited. So we're, we're sending everything off the, the development servers live. We're, we're tying up all the IT loose ends to make sure no one gets like a security error. So we think that the, the digital information is gonna be out to the dealers in uh, 48 hours and awesome. the, the print material is not long after. So momentarily. That's fabulous. So, so for everybody joining us tonight, I mean, you can see a little sneak peek behind the scenes here of what's getting ready to come here in the next 48 hours. And of course, we try to have our web page, the web page up by Friday. So we will do our absolute best to have all of these resources that we've talked about tonight uh, available on the web page. And if not, uh, when the web page launches, um, you know, as soon as we get our hands on it. So be on the lookout for that. So um, Tyler, Lisa, um, just thank you for all of your efforts, Tyler, for just finding a way to make education awesome right now. I mean, you're just an inspiration to all of us. So thank you. And um, Lisa, thank you for all of your efforts. I mean, I think this is one of the coolest initiatives um, that, that I've seen to kind of uh, bring together this um, pop culture reference of what's going on right now in movies with um, a, a great opportunity to grow interest in music uh, right now. So this is um, just thank you guys. Thank you. And Tyler is too modest to say it, but I'm going to say it. Uh, in 10 days, Tyler is going to be uh, named to the 40 under 40 to watch in music education because uh, he's awesome and he's doing amazing things. And we love his energy and his willingness to uh, to just be out there getting it done. So well, keep your thank eye on you the so side. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. I really appreciate that. <laughs> Absolutely. Congratulations. Now, we, we do have just a, um, a quick question. Um, somebody is asking about um, gathering studies and documents to support the reason for returning to school and keeping band and orchestra. Do you have any suggestions? And I think there's a lot of really good stuff out there. The first one that comes to mind is I know Bob Morrison has been really busy at Arts Ed New Jersey putting together some um, one sheets and information about the importance of music in our schools, the social and emo emotional learning component in a very digestible format that kind of breaks all of these studies down. Um, so for our listener, it's just as anonymous today. Uh, Lisa, do you have any other resources that you might share, Tyler? Yeah. Um, California for the Arts has also done a great advocacy toolkit, but in the toolkit, actually, Nick, that you and I and Tyler were working on, uh, we have a band director from Lincoln, Nebraska, who worked with the other um, choir and fine arts teachers to do a nine page justification that they then sent up to the administration and their school board, which was good enough for the school board to say like, okay, we get it, we're in, now show us your plan. So uh, Lance has graciously agreed to make that available. So it'll also be in the, in the files of downloads for teachers to use. 
Absolutely. So keep an eye on the toolkit that we're going to be hosting there on the Yamaha website. But also, if, if you're needing to have that conversation, like yesterday, there's some great stuff through Arts Ed New Jersey and through some of the, the California MEAs and some of these others. Um, and, and certainly, I know the NAM Foundation as well does a wonderful job. That's a third resource I'll throw out. Uh, the NAM Foundation, if you get on there, they've congregated a lot of those resources about how to have a conversation with your administrator um, and how to tie that back to the, the metrics that are important to them, graduation rates, truancy rates, drug and alcohol usage, test scores, things like that. Fortunately, the national we, anthem at sporting events. <laughs> absolutely. We have the data to show how music benefits all of those things. So, okay, perfect. Well, everybody have a wonderful evening. Thanks for joining us for After Hours. We will see you back in two weeks as we host Dr. Tim to talk about how to make 2021 your best year yet. In the meantime, everybody stay safe, wear your mask, wash your hands, and we hope you have a very wonderful evening. Bye, everyone. You've been listening to After Hours, conversations for music educators, presented by Amro Music. This podcast features conversations with music educators who are finding innovative ways to teach their students. You can hear and see more conversations at amromusic.com slash after hours.